Hello and welcome back to Recap. This is the show where I look your comments from the past week and react to it. The latest episode of Let's Plant was episode 85 and in that video I showed you how I deal with mature echeverias. Basically, I have shown you what I do with them from start to finish in the propagation process. So that was another entry in my propagation series of videos. From what I can tell, I think I would have about two or three more propagation episodes before I get back to build episodes. But we'll see, it depends on the content that I get to prepare because sometimes things just fall into place. So it sounds a bit foreboding, but that's pretty much what the next two episodes would be about. Just things fall into place. And now we're going to look at the comments. First one is from Rudy Succulent Obsession. Your son Zach is adorable and his driving made me laugh out loud. <laughs> Looks like he likes obstacles in his path because he went right back under the table right after you freed him. This was great information and hopefully others won't be so fearful to behead their Echeveria. I know the first time I beheaded one of mine was nerve wracking. Your collection is to die for. Yeah, I remember the first time that I dared cutting mine. It was an Echeveria Dix Pink. And from memory, I cut it. I cut it below the rosette, but I left a bit of gap. So as a result, only two pops came out. I was pretty glad that for my first time doing it, it worked. But only two pops came out. Uh, it was quite low. It's much lower than what I would normally get in my future head chops. But then again, it was my first time, so not bad for a beginner. From Mary Tango, LOL. What would you do when you lost your head? I am so jealous with your succulents, I can't wait to grow mine. Crossing my fingers and trying to control myself not to go another nursery garden store. But last Friday, I became a victim again. Spent $60 again. <laughs> your son is so cute. This addiction, there's no coming out of this. <laughs> From Clebo1, can repotting the plant with fertilizer and then chopping it help to speed up growth on the chop stem? You have amazing specimen plants. Maybe enter some of them to a succulent show. Thanks for the tips. So there's two things here to address. The first would be the question about chopping and fertilizing. I did respond to this comment and I would like to read it out now. Anyway, what I wrote was, yeah, this makes sense for the beheaded stem. Don't do it on the head though, because if you fertilize it, you're forcing it to grow and it will stretch unnecessarily. So what I would do is to fertilize after beheading and only on the stump with the roots. Now, the reason I say that is because you would want the pups that would grow out of the main stem to grow as fast as they can. But as for the head, you would not want it. You would not want to force it to grow really fast. Mainly because right now you just want it to grow roots and it won't be able to pull in the fertilizer anyway. And the other thing is that the reason why you chopped it in the first place is because it was getting leggy. You don't want it to grow so fast yet. But what I would do though is that when it finally has roots, once it grows out a thick root system, I would fertilize. Maybe. Let's say if it sprouts now, then I would give it maybe three or four weeks, depending on whether you're in the growing season or not. And that's when I would start thinking about fertilizing. In my case, I have I plant them in a rich soil medium, so I don't bother fertilizing. I only fertilize the, the younger plants, the, the pups. I leave my mature plants alone. And the next comment is from Zanizana66. Hi Chuck, what size pots are they? They look like enormous echeverias. I've never seen any that big in real life yet. I hope some of mine get that size eventually. Your plants are in such good shape, it looks like they made it through winter as skate. Well, most of them. <laughs> if you've seen my Let's Plant, no, not Let's Plant, you've seen my daily echeveria post, I've started posting some of the pops that I got last autumn. and. It seems like they have taken it really hard. They have taken winter really hard and I'm hoping they recover. If not, well, I've already resigned to the fact that I screwed up with those pups. But we'll see. Hopefully they bounce back to health, especially now that it's their growing season. And I hope I'm not too late with trying to rejuvenate them. 
So I've started giving them a bit more sunlight now and I've started watering them again. So yeah, we'll see. I hope everything works out in the end. From Karen Lottering, my Echeveria Black Prince has a good stem, but I don't know if I should leave it now, for now, or behead it now, and my Black Prince leaves doesn't look like it's propagating. It's now two weeks. Should I wait it out? Uh, just to give it context, Karen is also in the Southern Hemisphere, same as I, and right now we just came out of winter. It's the early parts of spring, and because of that, I told her that this is pretty much normal, everything, everything will be working slowly at this point. I would expect lots of growth towards maybe next month in October. But for now, this, this is all normal, you know? Don't expect too much from them because they are just getting out of dormancy. They are just starting to grow, they are just shifting, transitioning to the growing stage. So yeah, don't expect too much of them right now. But in case anyone else is wondering, um, I think the fastest it took for some of my chopped uh, mature echeverias to regrow, regrow roots was about two to three weeks and that was during the middle of summer, no not summer, towards the end of spring or yeah, somewhere where it was already warm and they are actively growing. But otherwise, I think uh, I tried, I also tried doing head chops back in early spring or late autumn where it's getting a bit cold and from memory it would take at least a month before any roots came out so yeah if you're after speed or efficiency then do it during the active growing season but otherwise if you don't have the time just make sure that they're not completely dormant when you do it next comment is from crafty fox the background music is so humming and relaxing Another great video. Thanks Chuck and Zach. I'm so glad you like it. I decided to go with a more chill background because the video is quite long. So <laughs> I think it would be off-putting if there was lots of, I don't know, loud stuff in between. So it has to be smooth all the way before we pick up towards the end. From Monolop, it's really scary to lose one right now because I don't have that much. So I'd rather not propagate unless I feel like it because I'd be just wasting because every time I behead and propagate, they all die. <laughs> so now I must wait. Also, can you make a video why over-nutrient consumption for succulents can fill it? Thanks. If not, then I understand. Also, great video. Thank you so much. I'm glad you liked the video. And reg regarding your question, questions, there's a few here. Uh, the first one would be about, I said questions, but they are actually statements. There was only one question. But regarding the first point here about propagating, the fear of propagating, the fear of beheading. As long as they are in the active growing season, I wouldn't be too scared, even if I chop it in the wrong place. Because I'm pretty sure that they will regrow. But if you do it the wrong time, where they are not growing as robustly, they are not vigorous, then there's a chance that they would rot because when they are dormant or when they are not actively growing, they would be rejecting water and any excess water would lead to rot. So there you go. The key here is knowing when or looking out for signs that they are actively growing. There are a few ways, at least in my climate, for me to know First would be color. So normally during winter or in the heat of summer, the rosette, the colors would be different from the normal. But once they are actively growing again, it would be bright green or tending towards green in the middle, uh, in the apical. And that would be in the apical merisam or the growing tip center. So you have to watch out for the shift in color. The other sign that uh, they are dormant is Again, depending on which extreme we're talking about, there's a heat dormancy and a cold dormancy. I've been saying for many times now that echeveras are actively growing during the warmer months, but that doesn't mean that during the heat of summer that they are not dormant. They go pseudo-dormant during the hottest parts of summer, and that's when they start protecting themselves. You would notice that when it gets too hot, when it gets hot enough, Echeveras will curl and cover their apical meristem. They 
shield themselves. So that's why you get those tight rosettes in hotter climates. But as the temperature improves, they would start opening again. So, so you have that. In heat dormancy or summer dormancy, they would be closed tight. While in, but on the flip side, during winter when it's cold, they have the leaves spread all the way down. So if this is the, the outer leaves, instead of curving upwards, they curve downwards. I'm not that flexible enough. Yeah. Anyway, imagine these are the leaves, so the rosette would be shaped like this. So the reason why I think they do this is because they want to redirect water away from the rosette. So you could imagine this is like a channel. Any water that comes down on the leaves would slide away from the plant. So that's what they're doing. From Succulents and Me, is it the plant on 315 Echeveria Paul Bunyan? Echeveria gibiflora caranculata is light blue and a bit greenish. I'm pretty sure it's a caranculata and caranculata is not light blue. Well, it appears light blue in photos, but it is actually more of a, it tends a bit towards pink. And compared to the Paul Bunyan, the Paul Bunyan has bigger leaves, wider leaves, while the caranculata has um, longer slender leaves. So what you saw the back there is a caranculata, only that it is a bit compact and that's pretty much how they look like during winter. Uh, the density of the rosette makes it appear that the leaves are bigger than they are. But if you look at it from, a, from the profile, from the side or level or underneath, then you definitely see the difference between a Paul Bunyan and the caranculata. And here's a couple of old photos of my specimens for you to compare. From Fran Life, I'm having a go at propagating a succulent for the first time. It looks so cool. I will be documenting. I will be documenting the progress on my channel. Wish me luck. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice that you're documenting this. I like seeing um, progress videos. So keep it up. From Lindsay Bringens. I hope I'm saying it right. Hello Chuck and Zach, very informative video. Looks like a couple of mine will be going to the gallows. Really enjoy Tuesdays to see what's coming next. <laughs> well, at the end of this video, I'm going to show a sneak peek of what the next episode is going to be about. From Betsling Sia, great video Chuck, enjoyed it very much. Wish I have that many plants. I went straight to my garden after finishing watching your video and cut off flower stalks with my agaboids. <laughs> Hope I am doing the right thing. By the way, are those round flat pots from Bunnings? Yes, I got all of them from Bunnings. You might find them in your local marketplace, I guess. Maybe someone would be reselling them. They are called bloomer pots. They come in sizes of, I think, 27 centimeters, 33 and 37. There might be others, but what I got, uh, it's not bowl shape. It's uh, extruded. I, I'm not sure what to how to describe it. But anyway, I think you know what I mean. From Love Sucks. This is perfectly timed. I live in a northern climate and we're going to into fall so I'm moving things inside. Thanks for showing some that you did in the fall and for the reminder that they'll take longer to get started. Mm. Any suggestions for tricking Echeveria into thinking it's spring when they're indoors? This is a very good question and I responded to it a few days ago and here's what I said. You're welcome. As for your question, you pretty much just need to provide enough light via grow lights and warmth to offset the winter. Personally though, I will allow them to go dormant. Just give them enough light during the day so they do not stretch. In other words, you are recreating the same length of day you are getting in winter indoors just a bit less colder. Keep it cold but not too cold enough to freeze. Maybe around your 40 to 60 Fahrenheit range, nighttime temps would be alright. Allowing them to rest during their normal period of dormancy will make them grow a lot more robust when your spring arrives next year. So that's my stand on the matter. I, I don't I don't like interrupting their normal uh, yearly cycle, so if they go, normally go dormant in your area, allow them to go dormant. But so my position on this, especially for those in colder climates than I am, I have, I'm in Melbourne and we have an equivalent of 
zone 10B. Uh, we rarely go below freezing. We can get pretty close, but not always. So what I would do is to still allow the plants to experience the cold, but just cold enough not for them not to freeze. So if you have to bring them indoors, maybe just a little bit of heating would be required. You know, you don't have to warm them up all the way to spring temperatures. You just have to you just have to keep them slightly above freezing. From Jen Kathleen Uyehara. You have such an amazing garden. I admire your knowledge and green thumb. When did you start growing succulents? I'm still a newbie. Started just last month. Wow. And I am learning a lot from your videos. Thank you. When did I start growing? I think it was in 2016. September, October 2016. And I planted them in the ground. I first planted my ground succulents in towards the end of October I guess either that or November that same year I've experienced two full set of seasons from spring to winter and spring again so I'm pretty confident with how I'm growing them now from blissful box I thought those big echeveras were in deeper pots that's interesting I have some gibiflora in huge pots but not doing well in my case I well, the truth is they haven't been there all their life. Normally, I would plant them in the ground in open space. That would make them grow really fast because there's nothing constricting them. And once they're big enough, that's when I consider putting them in pots, in pots like the one that you saw. Because there would not be much room for the roots to grow, assuming that they have a very thick root system. I think that the, the pot is deep enough for them. and. It will stunt them a bit, but they're already large, so, you know, there's not much to stunt there. <laughs> now, having beheaded those echeverias, I'm trying to decide whether I should plant them in the ground again or in put them back in the pots. I'm leaning towards placing them back in the pots, but part of me wants to plant them in the large bowls that I have reserved in, on the Patreon shrine, because I like to see more of the large rosettes in there, you know? Which means that maybe, maybe this calls for a graduation ceremony, you know? So the mature plants that used to be on the mound would now be going to the Patreon area. And I could promote a new set of freebies to go into the mound. Yeah, that might be a good idea. From Christina Eilers, learning so much on your channel, Chuck. Thank you so much, Christina. That's the goal of the channel. From Jennifer Leibenberg, what happens with the heads that are flowering? Will they finish flowering or will the flower stalks stop growing? I'm in the Southern Hemisphere too, and I'm also thinking about chopping some heads this weekend. I'm just unsure about what to do about the ones that are flowering. Edit. I typed this out before finishing a video, before you started talking about the flower stalks. So thanks for answering that question too. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you found the answer in the later parts of the video. But for the benefit of everyone else, I've tried several things in the past. I I have tried chopping I have tried chopping off the flower stalks completely and replanting them as is. I for the most part uh, they would regrow roots, totally fine, but they would still act as if they're a flower stalk, which means they're terminal. However, uh, out of many attempts, one of those flower stalks in my one of those flower stalks grew a pop on the base. So there's a tiny chance, a small chance, depending on the species or the variety that you're talking about, that they would grow offsets on the stem with the flowers intact. The other thing that you could do is, if you chop the flower stalk completely, you could remove, uh, you could snip off the flowers at the tips, stick it in the ground, let it root. It, by removing the flowers, you might activate all of those um, lateral meristems along the, along the stalk, and they might grow pumps. So that's something you can play around with. Another thing that I did was to keep the flower stalks on the plant itself, but just remove the flowers chop off the flowers 
And what that does is it activates all of the lateral meristems on the flower stalks. Sure, it might uh, force it to grow some flowers further along the cut, but keep. Uh, but all, but what you need to do is to keep chopping them every time it pushes flowers, and hopefully the lower ones would give you pops. It has worked for me maybe once or twice so far. It's still a, it's a low chance, but you know it's still something that you could do. The success rates are low, but hey, it's free. And of course, the other two methods that I that you could do, which I mentioned or at least shown in the video, is you could harvest the leaves and use them for propagation. And the other one that I only mentioned was to chop the flower stalk into segments. Maybe each segment has one or two leaves, and treat them like leaf propagation. You know, just lay them in somewhere bright and hope uh, pops would come out pretty much the same thing from Patricia Lisowski good music good camera work and good information thank you so much for the compliments I'm glad you like the style and finally from Rowena Pingol can you have the flower stock root yes I mentioned it well two questions ago you could replant the flower stalk if you like, it will grow roots, it will act like a normal plant, only it's terminal because of course there are flowers at the tip. So once the flowers are done pollinating and fertilizing, uh, the stem will be the stem will dry out from the tip and it will go downwards. If you act quickly and maybe chop off the flowers before they finish blooming or fertilizing, then you might be able to force some offsets to grow along the stem. But the success rates are so low that uh, you shouldn't keep your hopes up for that at least. Apart from the Let's Plant episode, I put out a Seriscapedia comparison video and it was about the Chihuahuaensis and Tipi. It is a follow-up video on the first one with the Colorata and Chihuahuaensis. So here are the comments. From Julie Seal, I love the series Chuck. Thank you so much, Julie. I'm so glad uh, you're giving feedback like this. Because this tells me that a series like this, a comparison series, is valuable. And that would only serve to keep pushing me to make more of these. Win-win. <laughs> From Dave's Fish Tanks. Great work, Chuck. You are a very multi-talented individual. Love your channel. I'm so glad you enjoyed the video. And thank you so much for the compliment. From Jesse Amons. Amons. Uh, I'll go with Amons. Thank you, Chuck. Happy to become a Patreon. Your succulent videos are so informative and really appreciated. Thank you so much, Jesse, for pledging. And uh, I don't mean to plug my Patreon, but you could follow my Patreon link either the top right part if you're on YouTube, or otherwise, if you can't see the link here, check out the description. I, I appreciate every bit of support that you give me because that would help me just further improve my craft and my production quality. Thank you so much. From Zanizana66, love loving the hyped up music at the end. You give me a laugh every video. <laughs> you will become known as the succulent superhero or super suck. Chuck the super suck. Oh dear, I think I should leave now before I say something ridiculous. <laughs> should I get a cape? Nah. <laughs> From Blissful Box. Thanks, Chuck. Another informative video. Loving the series. Again, like Julie earlier, thank you for giving me feedback about uh, this comparison videos because this tells me that content of this sort is useful and I like being useful, you know? <laughs> Who doesn't? And finally, from Rudy's succulent obsession, I think both Echeveria are stunning. I am unsure if I have any of those and I will have to go check and try to distinguish one from the other. As always, very informative and thanks for sharing. Mm. And as mentioned in the past recap, I think, I am now going to include comments from Facebook. I think I should have read uh, the episode 85.1 before I move on to uh, the comparison video. But in any case, let's go have a look at the comments. Okay, I'm looking at the Facebook post now. It has 610 views, 5 shares, but zero comments. Where are the comments? <laughs> oh well, they would come. Maybe next time. Before we wrap up this recap, I'd like to give you a brief teaser of what the next episode would be about.
thank you for watching yet another episode of Recap. Make sure to hit like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss out on other episodes. Let's Plan comes out every Tuesday morning my time and that would be Monday evening Eastern time and two days later on Facebook. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!